my name is Patty Faria, and I'd like to welcome you to Faria Dairy. We've been in the dairy business for over 50 years, and it's definitely a labor of love. In talking about dairy cows, there's two different kinds of cattle. There's dairy cattle that produce milk, and then there's beef cattle. They're built completely different, and generally the number one question I get asked is, why are your cows so skinny? Well, it's not that they're skinny, it's that they're designed to produce milk. So it's a very vital part of our agricultural community, especially in the San Joaquin Valley. Hi, I'm Amelia Navarez. I'm the District 5 Dairy Princess. California's top agriculture commodities are dairy products and milk, coming in over $7.3 billion. And today I'm here to talk about the dairy breeds. There are the black and white ones, which are the Holsteins. They produce most of the milks. Then you have the brown ones, which are the Jerseys, and everyone thinks they produce chocolate milk. They produce the normal white milk. And with the extra milk from the Jerseys, they go for the butter and cheese that you see in the grocery store. Then you have the Ayrshires. Then you have the Guernseys. They are the red and white ones. They're just like the Holsteins, which are the black and white ones, but with red and white. Then you have the brown Swiss, which is like a tan grayish color. Then you have the milking shorthorns. A cow is a female or a girl that has had a baby. A heifer is a female or a girl that hasn't had a baby yet. And a bull is a your intact boy. The gestation period of a cow is the same as humans. It's 40 weeks and the last two months of a cow's lactation, she doesn't go to the barn to give milk. That's her resting time, getting ready, and all of the nutrients go towards the calf. A baby calf, when it's born, weighs between 70 and 95 pounds. They are up and standing within an hour after birth. Our goal is to keep them as healthy as possible. The first thing that we like to do is dip the calf's navel to protect it from bacteria entering its body and we give it two bottles or one gallon of colostrum. Colostrum milk is the first milk that a cow produces and it passes on her antibodies to the baby calf. After the calf is taken from its mom, it's raised for about four months in our calf area. At that point, the heifer calf is weaned and she is moved out in a group situation until she's about a year to 15 months old when she's bred and then she's pregnant for 40 weeks and she becomes then, once she gives birth, a milk cow. Once a cow enters the barn, she is milked twice a day and produces approximately eight gallons of milk per day. Most recently, we've renovated the barn to be a double 16 with rapid exit. So there's 16 cows on each side, and when the cows leave the barn, the side comes up and they exit all at one time, which really allows us to milk more animals at a quicker rate. We milk about 900 cows, and they're generally lined up waiting to come into the barn. The string is brought in to the barn. First, they're in a holding pen where they, their udders are washed from sprinklers underneath. Then they go to a second pen where they are drying and waiting to go into the milk parlor. Once the cows are in the milk parlor, their udders are sprayed with an iodine-based disinfectant they're wiped dry, and then the cows are primed, which means that we check the milk in all four quarters to make sure that it looks healthy. At that point, the machines are put on. It takes about five to seven minutes for a cow to milk. They like to be milked. Our machines are calibrated so they have automatic takeoffs where the machine will come off when she's no longer producing milk and the suction on the machines is calibrated to be the same pressure as a baby calf would suck on the mother. The milk comes out of the cow at 102 degrees, that's her normal body temperature, and it is chilled down to approximately 35 degrees. 
the milk goes into a holding tank and is picked up here twice a day. Our tank holds about 5,000 gallons. Once the milk is in the tank, the solids start to separate from each other. In order to prevent that from happening, it goes through a process called homogenization. We spin it really fast to mix it back together. To ensure the product gets safe, it goes through a process called pasteurization, which is we heat the milk really high and cool it down. A mature dairy cow weighs between 1,200 and 1,500 pounds. In order for her to produce the milk that she does, she obviously eats and drinks a lot. 90 pounds of feed a day is what a normal milk cow will eat. She'll drink anywhere between 30 and 50 gallons of water per day. I call our commodity barn the cow kitchen. In the olden days, dairymen basically fed their cows only hay. Alfalfa hay to this day is the number one favorite food of dairy cows, but to improve production, we've added many byproducts from other commodities that are grown in our area. And the dairy cow, because she's a ruminant, can eat these where other mammals couldn't. This not only keeps her healthy, it also improves milk production. Things like cottonseed. Cottonseed used to just be piled up and filling up our landfills. This is what a cotton, the cotton balls look like on the plant. Inside each of these cotton balls are seeds that there was no use for. Cotton seed is now the number one most sought after commodity that we put in our ration. The other things that we use are almond shells and holes. We feed the holes and use the shells for bedding. Once the ration is mixed, all of the commodities are put together, the hay, the silage, and all of the byproducts. We call this total mix ration. DDG, which is dried distiller's grain, DDG is a byproduct of ethanol. It starts out as corn, then it becomes a biofuel, and what's left over looks something like this. It also comes in a wet form. Other things that we add to our ration are silage, which the big hills that you see on dairies covered in tires. Underneath that is corn silage or oat silage. Those are our two major crops that we grow for feed every year. Um, silage is kind of like the warm oatmeal in the ration. So all of these things get put together, the different hays, bits and pieces of the commodities, and our feeder in a big feed truck mixes it all for each string of cows that have different production levels. It ends up looking like this, and there's a little bit of everything in there, including minerals and vitamins. Each recipe is for a specific stage of lactation. So our highest producers get one ration, our lower producers get a different ration. Our dry cows, which is the last two months when the cows are not being milked and their last two months of their pregnancy, they get a much different ration as well. When all of these commodities are delivered by big trucks, parts and nails and screws have a tendency to fall off of the equipment. And so to keep the cows safe, we feed them a magnet. The magnets look like this. They're smooth, they're round on the edges, and they're fed to the cow, one magnet, and she keeps it for the rest of her life. It stays in the big first stomach, which is called the rumen, and it is heavy enough that it doesn't go on to like feed wood. 46% of the milk produced in California goes to make cheese. The rest of the milk is for all the fluid milks that we all drink, it, ice cream, yogurts, any of the dairy products. When you go to the grocery store, always look for the Real California Milk Seal 